Well, here we are in near Porta Plata in Ocean World. We're gonna, we've already checked out. We are gonna try and make the jump tonight because there's a window tomorrow night to cross the Mona Passage. A little breezy out here. So we'll see what happens. It's gonna be a rough night, I think. In late January, I returned to Little Bird in the Dominican Republic. If you remember from last episode, our pre-Christmas trip was cut a little short when our dog Yogi hurt himself in the marina. He's on the mend, but Tiff had to stay back and do a couple last vet appointments before she returned, this time without Yogi. To be honest, I think she also knew what was in store for this next passage. Really, a bumpy delivery trip along the worst part of the thorny path, up along the north coast of the DR, through the Mona Passage, to the south side of Puerto Rico, where she'll be flying in in a week or so. For now, it was Keith and I, and about 300 miles of rough passages to windward. What a night. We just passed Salmonella Bay. We didn't go in there. We're just going to keep going to Puerto Rico. A little weather window today, not really much of a window, but uh, I suppose it could be a lot worse. We're at about 15, 16 knots right on the nose. Not a horrible passage, but uh, not that fun either, that's for sure. We're just motoring into it. Welcome to Little Bird. We're Tiff and Frank from Santa Cruz, California. We launched our New Balance 526 catamaran in South Africa in 2021. After sailing it around the Cape and across the South Atlantic, we explored the Caribbean to Florida. This year, we're making our way back down to Grenada. Hit the subscribe button to follow along. Finally was able to open the upper helm and people come out from inside. Calm down quite a bit. Getting around the hourglass shoal right now. He says he can always start it when it hasn't been started in a long time on the first pull. Uh -oh. I'm saying it's going to take two, but it is Keith's birthday. I think it's going to be on the first pull. What do you think? It's your birthday. I'm going first pull. First pull. Oh. Uh -oh. Now there's trouble. There we go. Two. Number two. Pretty good though, in a few months. Once we were sure when Little Bird would make landfall, I flew in. San Juan, Puerto Rico is a vibrant city with plenty to see and do, and we definitely wanted to explore Old Town. Our first stop, El Moro, a UNESCO World Heritage Site. It is a massive fort and castle built in the 1500s. We walked around a bit and enjoyed the amazing views. Near El Moro was Castillo San Cristobal, which guarded the city against enemies approaching by land. Another massive fortress with incredible views of the city and sea. We followed this down to Puerto de San Juan, the official entrance to the walled city, and hung out there a bit. By this time, we had covered some miles, so we were ready for refreshments. We walked through the colorful cobblestone streets in Old Town and found Cafe Manolin. It had a great local vibe, and we enjoyed one of our favorite meals, mofongo, a Puerto Rican dish with plantains as its main ingredient. It was delicious. Puerto Rico. Now we're heading to Spanish Virgin Islands. Here we go. Spanish Virgin Islands. First stop, Vieques. So we're going to be fishing, huh? That's cool. I thought I was going to be sick on this one. It's totally upwind, but I'm actually feeling okay. I even had coffee this morning, so who knows? You just never know. It's pretty choppy. We had 30 knot winds at one point. So what do you do when you're on a bumpy passage and the boat starts leaking? You put towels down. No problem there. Little leakage, huh? A little bit. A few little wet spots here and there. <laughs> a couple of hatches. Starboard navigation light leaking. Joys of going upwind <laughs> for so long. <laughs> you guys did it, that's for sure. Here's the carnage from our leak. Puerto Rico over there. Vieques Island over here. Party motors over here. They come over from uh, Puerto Rico. 
Hanging out over there. One thing's for sure, we really learned a lot on how Little Bird sails to weather on this trip. When we weren't motoring directly into it, we found we could easily handle 35 degrees apparent wind with very little sideways slipping thanks to the dagger boards. With the main and jib, we were tacking through a little over 90 degrees course over ground with little effort. With the upwind code zero, we added about 10 degrees, but went quite a bit faster. But at the end of the day, tight to the wind, we were still winning with just the jib and 10 to 15 knots true when it came to the MG. Didn't take long to catch those guys. No. What's our wind angle? 35 apparent. We really liked the remoteness of Vieques Island and the Spanish Virgins, but after a few days, it was time to head to more civilization in Culebre. Land adventures are part of the fun of being on a boat, and Calibra was another great stop. Most people were getting around by golf carts, but I was glad we had a car. The roads were decent, but there were times we were on very steep and rough terrain. We had fun exploring the remote beaches, including Zoni Beach and my personal favorite, the famous Flamenco Beach. The day ended with a drink at a great bar near town, and then off to a neighborhood restaurant called Harspoons for another amazing meal. Breezy day in the Anchorage. Doing some laundry. We finally finished up the thorny path in St. Thomas, Water Island, Honeymoon Bay. First of the virgins. What do you think of our last passage on the thorny path? <laughs> oh. <laughs> yes, well, you saw me. Flat on my belly. Trying not to throw up. Unfortunately, wasn't that fun. We stopped briefly in Charlotte Amelie to provision, then headed right out to Christmas Cove, an anchorage known for the pizza boat, which Tiff was really excited about. Tiffy waiting for the pizza delivery guy. With my cocktail. Pizza, pizza. What are you looking out the window for, Tiffy? I want the pizza. When's the pizza coming? It should be here in four minutes. Can we see the pizza delivery yet? Pizza time. I think it's coming. It looks like he's coming towards us. You got your money? Yeah. Cocktail and pizza time. Yay! Pizza delivery! Woo! I've been looking out the window. <laughs> awesome. Thank you so much. I built my helpers this time, too. Yeah, nice. Thank you. Adds to the experience. The pizza delivery. <laughs> there you are. Awesome. Do we just Sweet. take it out of here? Yes, ma'am. OK. Oh my God, Frankie. All right. <laughs> thank Pizza you so time. much. Thank you. It's all you. Thanks, you guys. Nice. All right, Thanks. cool. Have a great trip. Yeah. Enjoy. Thank you so much. Yeah, we will. Ooh. Let's get that first taste, see what you say. Mm. Oh my God. Mm. Delicious. Good pizza. I had only passed through the U.S. Virgins in the past and had really missed how awesome they are. From the islands off St. Thomas to the wonderful coves of St. John, there are really some beautiful spots to be found. One of our favorites was Hawks Nest Bay National Park, complete with an underwater snorkeling trail. That was a new one for us. A little sunset action. This is quite the spot. US VIs We're having a pretty good time here. I was hoping to do a little wing foiling today. Francis Bay had some promise, but it's a little gusty here. So we decided not to get out there because I really hate being dragged behind the dinghy. So anyway, it's kind of gusty at the moment and pretty much all day. So there you have it. On to the next spot tomorrow. Where are we going tomorrow, Frankie? I can't remember. 
while we're going into the BVI's, we'll go to the west end called Soper's Hole, check in, and we'll probably go over to Cane Garden Bay or somewhere on the north side of Tortola. Perfect. Bye bye, USBI. Here we go. Heading to BVI's, which I've never been to. I'm very excited about. The next morning, we did the short hop to the BVI's. We checked in at Soper's Hole in Tortola and did a bit of provisioning before heading to the island of Josh Van Dyke. We grabbed a mooring and headed to shore to hike to the bubbly pool. Hike into the bubbly pool. The hike was short and easy, and we had it all to ourselves. It was a great start to the BVI's. As with most of our time on Little Bird, I had never seen this part of the world. It was beautiful, and for the next six days and seven anchorages, it just kept getting better. The next morning, we motored over to Sandy Key, just one and a half miles from Josh Van Dyke. We had heard there was a nice hike on the island and a beautiful beach, so we left early to get a head start on the crowds. We were the first to arrive, and we swam ashore. The sand was gorgeous, and there were so many shells and coral, including a bunch of coral fans that must have washed up in the storms and recent hurricanes. We found our way to a little path that took us on a hike around the entire island and up to a great vantage point. The birds and plants were so interesting and we spent a nice morning just enjoying the solitude. After a short sail from Sandy Key, we pulled into one of my favorites, Cane Garden Bay. It's a really fun little beach town on Tortola and we were hoping to find some small surf. But it turned out the North Swell wasn't quite showing up in time, so we enjoyed some great bars and restaurants along the beach. Welcome to Coffee Talk with your host, Linda Richmond. Welcome to Coffee Talk. I'm your host, Linda Richmond. After here, we're going to Virgin Gorda, right? Yeah, Virgin Gorda. And then we'll head over to Nevis and St. Kitts and maybe Saba. Well, I tell you, this is one of the prettiest places I've been. I'm really stoked that we came here. I didn't know if I was going to like it as much as I do. Yeah. It's really Always beautiful. Always seems so overrun with bear boat charters and everything, but they're fun enough. Oh, so fun. We're meeting some really cool people. Went to Mr. T's last night. Willie T's. Willie T's. We had a good time, didn't we, Frankie? What happens at Willie T's stays at Willie T's. <laughs> wow, we are in the best snorkeling spot I've ever been to, near Pelican Island in the BBIs, called the Indians. And I have never seen anything like it. Oh my God, I just was in heaven. Beautiful coral and fish. There were just so many and super deep. Visibility was awesome. Good times. The snorkeling had been great so far, but we were ready to do something a bit more. There was a famous wreck nearby, so we arranged to go out with a local dive shop to see the wreck of the Rhone. It was amazing. This was my first wreck dive and I was hooked. After the dive, we kept heading east to Virgin Gorda and visited one of the most famous spots in the BVI's, the Baths. An incredible hike through massive granite boulders to crystal blue waters and beautiful beaches. Our last stop in the BVI was the bitter end. We had fun exploring Saba Rock and the Yacht Club, but then the weirdest thing happened on our last night. Holy shit. We were sitting around as it got dark when suddenly the whole sky started to light up. Whoa. Elon, what are you doing? 
At first, we thought it was a meteor. What is going on, guys? That looks like a launch of some sort. Sure enough, we found out the next day SpaceX was launching their new Starlink satellites. What a crazy sight. Ironically, our Starlink dish crapped out the next day. Coincidence? More on that next time. That is weird. <laughs>